Whoa. Uh oh, something's happening. Okay. Okay, I think I have it. <laughs> okay. All right, so I need to turn something off, I can tell. Okay, <laughs> I think I have it. <laughs> I'm playing it somewhere. Okay. All right, so I need to turn something off, I can tell. Okay. <laughs> I think I have it. <laughs> this is a nightmare. <laughs> All right, so I need to turn something off, I can tell. Okay. I think I have it. This is a nightmare. There we go. So, is is it okay now? Are we okay? <laughs> Whoo! All right. Welcome. Good morning. Happy 4th of July. Uh, welcome to Holy Redeemer Lutheran Church. And uh, we are just, a, we are ready to start worship. So uh, Frederick, if you would please, um, please uh, play a oh, beautiful for spacious skies. forever. Thank you, Frederick. Welcome to worship. Welcome to you if you're a male or female or a little bit of each, queer or straight or a little bit of each, black or brown or white or a little bit of each, rich or poor or a little bit of each, doubting or believing or a little bit of each. Welcome to worship. Let us pray. God of the covenant in our baptism, we call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you give the apart that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Thank you. 
Sorry, our first scripture reading is from Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. In 597 BCE, the priest Ezekiel was removed into exile in Babylon. While there, he received a vision of God appearing majestically on a chariot throne. Today's reading recounts God's commissioning of Ezekiel during this vision. The prophet is to speak God's word to a people unwilling to hear. Ganai folo folo mai ki te ao kako itangata tu uaki hova e kaulea ki te koe pahu ki te ao ai lau mali e ganai folo folo mai one foko tu uau aki hoku va e pe wongo i ganai folo folo ki te ao ganai folo folo mai kako itangata ko ko e ku fe kaua tu ko e ki ha isleli ki ngai pule anga Anga tuu aia ko nawanga tuu ki a te au. Ko ki nau tolu mo e nau ngahi kui ko nau talanga taa ki a te au. O au ki e foi aho ko e ni. Io o ku mataila ai fa nau mo loto fe feka. O ku o fe kawatu ko e ki ai pe te ki lea ki a te ki nau tolu o pe he. Ko e folofola e ni a ato nai si hova. Pa ko ki nau tolu, ko i ai pe te nau fi whanongo, pe te nau kalofi, e ko i whaamili pau u ki nau tolu. Ka te nau ilo na e ai hapalofita na e hoko ki a te ki nau tolu. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. And now our Psalm reading is from chapter 123. Ko tau o tuani, kai oua kene ofa mai. Ofa mai eiki, ofa mai, e ko mā kona whau i he manuki. O ku fuu mā kona whau ho maulau mālie, i he luma e kakai nofo whie mālie, a manuki e kau whie eiki te. Thank you, Christina. All right, so today's uh, story, the gospel story, is one that has a, a thing that Jesus is sending the disciples out to talk to people two by two. And he's really limiting what the disciples get to take with him, with them. So one of the things, one of the few things they get to take is a walking stick. I got this one at the fair a couple of years ago. Uh, well, more than a couple of years ago, back when my I was having a hard time walking. And it's really helpful when you've got a long way to walk or you've got um, a sore foot or you know whatever's going on. A walking stick is a really good way to help you keep your keep your strength and keep going, you know, no matter uh, what happens when you're walking. So I thought that that was kind of a neat thing that Jesus uh, allowed them to have this walking stick along with them. And I got to thinking that that's kind of how Jesus is for us. Jesus is always with us like a walking stick to help us keep our faith, to help us keep our strength, to help us to, um, Jesus is always there to help us in whatever situation we're in, to make life smoother and to know we're always we're never alone that God is always with us like a good walking stick that will help us get wherever we need to go God is with us at all time so maybe you might uh, find yourself a walking stick for the next time you take a nice walk any old stick will do but God is always always with us helping us with whatever we need to do all right thank you thank you for coming kids Let's 
see what's going on. Okay. Let's see, Christina, would you like to read this? You could read it in English or Tongan. Sure. Okay, thank you. And the gospel reading is from Mark chapter six, verse one through 13. At home and abroad, Jesus and his disciples encounter resistance as they seek to proclaim God's word and relieve affliction. Banane alu me potu goya, onea ukunofonua o ona, bamui mui giai ene kawako. Ba ihehoko ai sa pate, nane kamata fayako ihe falenotu. Ba to o ai hatokolahi na efanongo giai, ona upehe. Me fe ihe sianani angahi me ani. Ba koe hafua ai potoni wa. Wa ange kiai, be a mei fe ene pai hangahi ku ngawe fakau fopehe. Ikae ko tu funga eni ko tama amele mo tokoa o se misi mo siose mo siutasi mo saimone. Be ikae o kuiheni hano ngahi tu a faafine o fele mo faafo ia te kitau tolu faunau tu kia ia te ia. Kakalea e si isu kia te ki nau tolu o pehe, o kuikai masiva faka apa apa e hapalo fita, ka ihono whonua totonu, mohono kainga o ona, mohono whamini. Pana ikai tene lava ke whai ai hanga au e faka au po e taha, nga tape i he ene hili whaki, ono ni maa kia ni ihi na e mahaki o faka mau ui. Pa koe me a whakaofo ki a teia a e nau ta e tui. Pea ne fori whakataka milo a ngā hiruliki o whai e ne ako. Ko fe kawatu e si isu e toko hongo fulu māua. Pea ne u i ange a e kau hongo fulu māua. O ne hanga o fe kawatu ki nau tolu o tau tau toko ua. O ne tuku ki a te ki nau tolu ke fa i te liha ki ngahi fa ahi ke he. Na ne tutu uni foki ki a te ki nau tolu ke oa te nau to'o ha me a ki he hala ngā tape i a toko toko. Ka e oa e ave ha mā te peha kato oho te whakapona ha fa anga kato. Kapa i honau noo. Pea e topu wa e aki a e te kape, pea e ikai ai ha sote e ua. Nane pehe e foki ki a te ki nau tolu, pea ka i ai ha mauhu ki he whare, no fope ai ka e oa ke mauhi ki me he potu ko i ai. Pea i longa ha potu e ikai tari ki mau tolu, Pe whanongo ki a te ki mau tolu, pa ka mau ka tuku whanongo me ai, mau tutu ui a e fu i ho mau au fi wa e, koe whaka i longa ki a te ki nau tolu. Pa na nau alu o whanongo nongo, ke whaka to mala ai kakai. Pa nau ka apusi ai whanga te volo toko lahi. Pa nau pane aki ha lolo ai toko lahi nai mahaki o whaka moui. The Gospel of our Lord. Peace be to God. Thank you so much. All right. So, I just do one thing here. All right. Today is the 4th of July, and just so you know, my father was a Republican and my mother was a Democrat. <laughs> um, I grew up with a deep appreciation and love for this country, and my love of America became unshakable after I spent three and a half months in Spain and learned what it was like to live under the dictatorship of Francisco Franco. 
Now, before that, I was in high school in the late 60s, early 70s, and the, the U.S. was in the midst of the turmoil of, Viet, of the Vietnam War. It was a confusing time. I had a brother serving in Vietnam, and I had friends who headed to Canada to escape the draft. It was fairly early in the women's movement, and we girls were pondering whether we should register for the draft if the guys had to. I pondered, but I didn't have the nerve to enlist. <laughs> there were Vietnam War protests going on, and I remember very vividly that there was a phrase that was being bandied about at that time. It appeared on red, white, and blue bumper stickers and signs with white stars on the blue background. And some of you may remember this phrase. It was showing up all over the country. The phrase was, America, love it or leave it. You could see it on cars, plastered on walls. It showed up on lawn signs and church signs and anti-protest signs. If you listened in coffee shops, you could overhear folks saying it. Some people said it in the throes of patriotic fervor and others said it in deep, fury at those who were protesting. I imagine that you can imagine what it was like, even if you weren't back then. As I was thinking about this Bible story and putting it together with a 4th of July holiday, love it or leave it came to mind because of today's story, something that Jesus says. In the Gospel of Mark, so far, Jesus calls, has called his disciples. He's told a lot of parables. He's done a lot of healing and miracles and been rejected by his hometown. And now he's going about, about among the vi villages teaching. In today's story, he begins to send out the disciples two by two. They are to cast out demons and to heal people. So can you imagine how it was for the disciples here are Jesus' eager disciples. They've been fervently studying all that their rabbi Jesus has taught them. And Jesus says, okay, guys, I want you to head out and take care of my people. Oh, what broad smiles they must have worn. Jesus goes on, I'll send you out two by two and give you authority over unclean spirits. You'll be able to cast out demons and heal people. Can you hear what they're thinking? Oh boy, they think, finally, I get to do more than just sit at Jesus' feet. Hey, Matthew, you were a tax collector. How much money should we take? Uh, maybe you can give me a loan. And Simon, you're a tent maker. You have any tents we can use when we go? We'll need six of them. Two men tents would be perfect and easy for us to carry around. I wonder if we can find six good pack animals to carry all our stuff. Whoa, wait a minute, guys, Jesus cries. You got the wrong idea. I don't want you to take anything with you. What? What do you mean? I mean, no tents, no pack animals. Good grief. Jesus, how will we make that work? I guess we'll have to carry a bag with our food and our money and extra clothes. And they look up in astonishment when Jesus says, I said, I don't want you to take anything with you. Imagine 12 faces blank with shock. Jesus goes on, no money, no bread, no bag. We can't take anything, Simon Peter says. Well, Jesus relents a little. You can take a walking stick and you can wear sandals, but no extra tunic. You go in light, guys. You'll need to rely on the kindness of strangers. Even the poorest among you will know that you care about everyone. That in the reign of God, even the poorest of the poor are valuable to God. And then comes that strange instruction. That instruction that just doesn't sound like the Jesus we know and love. Jesus says, if any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So is this a love it or leave it situation? Either you come to love Jesus or us Christians won't have anything to do with you. Somehow that just doesn't seem right. So what is Jesus doing here? 
What if what Jesus is doing is accepting people as they are? Some folks that disciples encounter won't be ready to hear what the disciples are saying. They won't let themselves be healed, won't allow anyone to exercise their demons. They simply won't be ready to accept love and forgiveness and grace. So Jesus says, move on to those folks who are ready to hear the good news. Jesus says, your job is to believe in what I believe in and to offer the hope of a changed life. A life of healing and of love and of grace, grace day after day after day. And in the past 2021 years, Jesus has continued to send out his followers, has continued to heal and cast out demons, has continued through revelation and through his followers to offer changed lives and love and grace to anyone who is ready to hear. And that, my friends, it what, is what makes a difference. That unceasing offering of lives of healing and love and grace is the only thing that can and has changed lives and changed hearts and changed countries and can change ours. Let us continue in hope, in the hope of Jesus Christ. In 1978, at the end of the period that I'm talking about, I was talking about before, Margaret Mead, the anthropologist, accepted the Planetary Citizen of the Year Award and she said, and you probably heard this, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Amen. Please join me in confessing your faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. And on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of all, through the waters of baptism, you claim people of all races, ethnicities, and languages as your beloved children. Sustain the baptized and increase their faith that your gospel may be proclaimed throughout the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of the heavens, your creating spirit animates the universe. We give you thanks for the moon and stars, for the planets and the Milky Way galaxy, and for all the mysteries of the cosmos that remain unknown to us. Lord, in your mercy. God of freedom, you have liberated us from sin and death and rescue us from all forms of spiritual, social, and political oppression. 
Defend us from tyrants in our midst and deliver us from all forms of slavery or corruption. Direct our freedom for works of liberation and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, you became vulnerable in the person of Jesus Christ in solidarity with the disempowered. Strengthen those who feel faint. Give courage to those who fear and bring wholeness to those in need. Lord, in your mercy. God of holiness, you send us out into the world to proclaim your love. We pray for our outreach ministries. Equip us as we leave this place to witness and serve our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Here, we give you thanks that in every time and place you call forth prophets who move us towards freedom. Thank you for those who work for human rights, community, organizers, and all who strive for liberty for all. Lord, in your mercy, we lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Hear the blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. So thank you all for coming. Uh, wonderful to have you here. We will be worshiping, uh, opening up and doing in-person in -person worship in a couple of weeks, July 18th. So feel free to come and join us here in Newark or continue to worship with us either live stream or Zoom. Uh, so thank you. God bless you. Thank you for coming.